All right, Mr. Beard, man, let's talk about your Washington commander sitting at two and one headed up 95 to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. who are three and oh, this one's Sunday at 1 p.m. Uh, Eagles by eight and a half in this one, man. That's, that's a big <laughs> chunk right there, man, considering y'all won the last matchup between these two teams, 32 to 21. That was in Philadelphia as well. So that's kind of in your favor as well. Last week, the commanders got completely pit bull walked around the block like four times, 37 to three from the Bills. The Eagles beat the Tampa Bay Baker Buccaneers 25 to 11. A reporter asked Jalen Hurts, we might look at a QB throwing for 300 yards and three touchdowns in a loss and say, well, the QB was good, but the team was bad. You don't seem to care about that. You seem to only care about did the Eagles win or did they not win? How did you get to that point? Jalen Hurts had a two-word response by losing. I got a famous Gary V quote that I always pull. It's whoever fails the most wins. And a lot of people just don't understand that. And all it means is don't quit. And I think that's a perfect example of what Jalen Hurts is, man. A lot of turmoil throughout his college career and his NFL career. And the dude is here, man. He played in the Super Bowl last year. This kid is balling out. Jalen Hurts is 20-1 and one in his last 21 starts. The Commanders are the only Eagles opponent with more than one win in Philadelphia since 2020. Philadelphia is one of three undefeated teams along with the Dolphins and the 49ers. And Jason Kelsey, man, he's pushing them Eli Manning-type numbers right now. This is going to be his 143rd consecutive start mm. for an offensive lineman that is That's, extremely yeah. impressive. You know, I always thought about this, and I didn't tell you this on the last show. When they do that, uh, what's the Philly quarterback sneak called? The tush the, push? The tush push, yeah. The tush push, man. You got to think, like, Kelsey is in the middle of that, bro. And I'm me. I'm the type of dude, right? I'm a little claustrophobic, man. Like, if you put me in a small space, like, put me in a trunk, I'm a straight panic. I'm going to find my way up out of there. You put me in a coffin like Uma Thurman and Kill Bill, I'm going to find a way to get up out of there. Doing all of that. I'm getting up <laughs> out of there, okay? Now, J- <laughs> Jason Kelsey, man, that's, that's definitely a feat for him. The Eagles are the only NFL team with multiple takeaways in each of their first three games. Washington dominated the time of possession in that first matchup. I think they're going to need a little bit of that in this game. Uh, Eagles dominated time of possession last week against the Bucs, so I think this is going to be the matchup with time of possession. They beat the Bucs in time of possession 38-55 to 2105. The Eagles offense has been doing some pretty good some pretty good work, but they also have some things they need to iron out, a couple of wrinkles. Jalen Hurts coming off a two-interception performance last week versus the Bucs. The, uh, but the Eagles outgained the Bucs. <laughs> I got a little typo here that says outgunned. They outgained the Bucs, 472 yards to 174. Hertz had two total touchdowns in that game, and he had 305 total yards of offense. The Eagles ran the ball 40 times for 201 yards. DeAndre Swift in the past two weeks has 44 attempts for 305 yards and one touchdown, 16 rushes last week for 130 yards. Mm. Beard, what you thinking about this game? You let me know when I got a push button on that roadmap. I'm ready for you, bro. We're going to go right into the roadmap because everything else will follow. So we'll go right into the roadmap. It's going to be detailed. It's going to be quick. We're going to get there maybe. <laughs> maybe. Shout out to the <laughs> GPS system sponsored by, unofficially sponsored by, Waze. Waze. <laughs> yeah, you I love what she says. What do I do? <laughs> that's hilarious. That's All right, Bill, let's get what, right to uh, it, man. I felt putting this road map <laughs> together. Listen, okay, I'm not quite sure what great philosopher said this or if any great philosopher said this. It might have just came to me or it was Splinter and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But in order to beat someone, you must become that someone. Okay. 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 That okay. is how we're going to win this game. Like the Washington Commanders like must become the Philadelphia Eagles. You said this at the beginning of the year, too. I Sam did. I, it's Hertz, all coming receivers. full circle. Like okay, like listen. The Philadelphia Eagles are averaging 185 yards rushing per Ooh. game. That is second best in the National Football League. If okay. the Washington Commanders want to win this game, they need to run the ball for at least... 180 yards. I like it. I like it. We off to a great start. We're off the to a great start. The Philadelphia Eagles. They're number one in rush defense in the National Football League. They are only allowing 48.3 yards rushing per God game. Damn. The Washington Commanders must become 
the Philadelphia Eagles and only allow the Eagles to run the ball for 50 yards or less if they want to win this football game. Red zone defense, okay? You can only allow the Philadelphia Eagles to convert in the red zone one time. They have the eighth best red zone conversion percentage right now in the National Football League, converting on 40% of their red zone opportunities. Now, Washington got to convert on third down. I need us to convert 60% of our third downs in this game. Philadelphia actually has the eighth worst third down defense in the National Football League, okay. allowing opponents to convert 45.7% of their third downs. Okay. So that's so, a, that was the Patriots. That was the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. Who's the third team they played? They just played the on Thursday night. The Bucks. The, the Bucks. Bucks. Bang. Okay. Okay. There just kind of gauging the offenses. You know what I'm saying? All right. There we go. Now, we need to hold Philadelphia to 30% or lower third down conversion percentage. Currently, the Washington Football Commanders team, (laughs) (laughs) even after the debacle of last week, allowing Buffalo Bills to convert what felt like 116% of their third downs, we have the fifth best third down defense in the National Football League right now, only allowing opponents to convert on 46.5% of their third downs. And last but certainly not least, the last two are going to go together. Okay? You got to hold the damn ball. Okay? Hold the damn ball for 35 minutes plus. The only way to hold the damn ball for that long is to run the damn ball. Facts. I'm going to need 30 carries in this game. I want 30 rushing plays in this game. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, Roadmap to Victory unofficially officially sponsored by Waze GPS System. Now, just to kind of wrap all that up together, some things I'm looking for in the Washington Commanders in this game. Discipline. Defensively, you have to play disciplined against a team like the Philadelphia Eagles because you do not want to, you know, give up too many gaps. You want to be able to contain the outside edges. We have a totally. tendency to run very wide on the edges between Sweat and Chase Young. So we got to be very disciplined in our run defense. There's no way you're going to hold the Philadelphia Eagles to 50 yards or less rushing unless you're very, very disciplined. Other things, obviously, turnovers. We cannot turn the ball over five times in the game. We got to get back on the, the track of forcing two turnovers. I am pleased, though. Five turnovers through the first three games for a team that was in the bottom of the league good. and forced turnovers last season is definitely an improvement. But we're going to need more because our offense is still learning how to be an offense. And speaking of our offense still learning how to be an offense, I need to see more balance. It just has to be more balanced way too many pass plays and i don't mind the pass plays being outweighing the rushing plays at some point right yeah. but it has to be a balance within the play calling you can't call six straight pass plays and then one run play six pass plays one run play you got to mix it up a little bit and the one way that you can also do that is by doing a lot more screens like you did in the denver game we didn't see any screens in the buffalo game i like to mm. see some screen plays in this game and last but certainly not least that defense if it wants to succeed it cannot give up the big play. It's going to be tough with guys like A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith who are absolutely just big play playmakers. So try to limit those big plays. And those are the – if you could do all of those things, you still you might still not lose. win. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I'm just I – I want to see better, obviously. It hates – I hate to say it. Like <clears throat> some people are like, oh, I want to see wins. Yeah, well, duh, we all want to see wins. Facts. But listen – we, we just want to see some progression here. This is, offense is an intricate offense. This is not Scott Turner's offense. It's going to take a little time for these wide receivers to learn the spacing of the routes and, and, and how the play is, is coming together. Like, some of these people think it's just like in, out, fly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, go, go, go over there, by the <laughs> Act like you're in the ghetto. <laughs> go, go to the Buick and turn around. I'll hit you over there. That's, that's yeah. how they be thinking. But it's not like that, and, and, you know, we're still learning how this offense is going to operate in the long run. So I just want to continue to see improvement. And obviously, you know, if you can pull off all those things that I talked about today, there's there's a chance. I mean, listen, we did it with Taylor Heineke. We sure as hell better be able to do it with uh, Sam Howell. Howell. You know what I'm saying? So You you spoke on the defense a little bit there, you know, um, as far as, like, not allowing the big play. The other thing, you got to get after the quarterback. Zero sacks last week against the Buffalo Bills on 32 yeah. dropbacks. That, that's unacceptable. 
And speaking on the uh, Eagles' rush defense being number one in the NFL, you said allowed uh, 48.3 yards per game. Brian Robinson holds the NFL's longest active streak right now. This is surprising mm-hmm. just saying that, right? Yeah. With 10 consecutive games of at least 50 rushing yards. So you got to rely on him. He's a big dog. Even though when we saw him at um, at training Gibson's camp, it looked like Gibson's him. like the bigger running back, right? Yeah. But on the field, Brian Robinson obviously plays uh, like a bigger stature, stature running back. Now, Sam Howell's got to clean it up, man. Last week, sacked nine times. You talked about it. Half of them were probably on him. Four interceptions. I'm curious to see how he rebounds from this game. Washington has allowed an NFL worst 19 sacks through three games. Got to clean that up. A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about here. Last week, A.J. Brown, nine receptions, 131 yards on 14 targets. Devonta Smith kind of took a little break. He was off for the day. Uh, But the week before that, he had four receptions for 131 yards and one touchdown in week two versus Minnesota. Now, I always say this, if if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. And if the commanders can stop A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith, I think they'll have a chance in this game. I really think it starts with them. If you can limit both of them, because they're obviously going to run the ball and they're probably going to get some yards in the running game, right? You got to limit the big plays like you said, and most of their big plays come from A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. Definitely got to find a way to do that. I'll give you my score right off the bat. I don't think that the Eagles are going to allow the commanders to come up there to Philadelphia and beat them two times in a row. I just don't see it. I got to take the Eagles here. And that they've been playing pretty ugly football and winning games, you know, that are gritty like that. They've found ways to win those games. I think they're going to beat you guys by about a good 10 points. Um, I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles in this one. I'll say 27-17. Yeah, I mean, for me, I can't, it's I cannot pick the commanders anymore to beat teams that are better than them until I see some consistency amongst the entire commander's team offensively and defensively. Mm-hmm. So I, for me, it like, just like how you would be said with the giants, like I would be doing the people that watch this that are a commander's fan a disservice. If I sat here and tried to tell you that I think the Washington commanders are going to beat the Philadelphia Eagles. Totally. But I do think that the, I'm hoping that these coaches do a better job of coaching because I know that these guys play hard. They play hard for this coaching staff, no matter how much bad things that the fan base wants to say about Ron Rivera. And people are already turning on Sam Howell. They're already turning on yeah, Eric I saw So, like, for me, I, I I have faith in this coaching staff. I just I need to see some more consistency. I got Philadelphia winning this game by a final score of 20-17. to 20 to 17. Twenty to seventeen. I'm digging it, man. All right, let's drop this little sweeper one time, and we'll uh, we'll come back with the trivia segment. <laughs> 